Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of Quest for Creative. In the last episode, I deafened everybody because I started the video over by the chicken coop. And, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize that the chicken coop was that loud. And, uh, I can't, I'm, I'm not recording with audacity like I normally do. I'm just recording straight up with fraps. That way I don't have to worry about audio sync issues. And, uh, yeah, so I couldn't readjust the volume like I normally do. Anyway, so I was just looking at this thinking, wow, we have done a lot of crap so far. And we're only on episode five. This is more than I've done in the first five episodes of any series I've ever done. Hmm. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, in the first episode, we went over the basic ground rules and did some mining. In the second episode, we made the chicken coop and some cobblestone. In the third episode, I made the smithy that I haven't actually used since the last episode. Yeah. Uh, the fourth episode, we cheated and made a spawner. And today, we are going to make something that is going to be the basis for pretty much everything else that I make in this series. So pay attention. Now, what we're going to need is a lot of stuff. If we look, we can see we need a planter, a harvester, a lava fabricator, steam dynamo. Well, technically, no. The lava fabricator is actually just for this part, this chunk here is for the basis this is the ba the main thing that i'm going to be building and this is actually just a secondary thing that i'm going to be using all this for all right anyway so uh planter harvester from mine factory reloaded steam dynamo couple hardened energy cells at least three uh you pr I, I might need more and i've got three more in the uh blah chest yes Okay, so uh, we need a couple upgrades, preferably lapis, because that's just simple as that. And these are also mine factory reloaded. These obviously are thermal expansion. Uh, the rest of these, well, these are thermal expansion as well. We'll need some energy conduits, uh, some fluid ducts, some item ducts, pneumatic servos, aqueous accumulator, redstone furnace. Uh, it's going to vary how many we'll need on that. Ooh, I need hoppers. Uh, we'll need some fertilized dirt from random things. And that's just to make this more efficient. And yeah, I just realized I need hoppers. Do I need hoppers? Yeah, I need hoppers. We'll make a whole bunch of hoppers. Actually, we'll make nine hoppers. <laughs> if my math is correct. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Yep, nine hoppers. Okay. Nine hoppers will do me. I was actually hoping to build, to make a whole bunch of them, but no, nine hoppers will do me. Okay, so uh, first things first, I need to dig out a 5x5 five five area. Where's my shovel? And it's going to be too deep. Two, three, four, five. This, the shovel's fun, it's just you have to be very, very careful with it. Uh, that's four... It's five, okay. Because it'll just dig straight down, like, instantly. And I don't want to go down. I just want this. Blazing fast. Blazing fast shovel. Very useful. Uh, eventually, I'll probably make a Tinker's Construct shovel that'll do basically the same thing. Um... You know, I just haven't gotten around to it ever since we made the uh, Silk Touch pickaxe in the last episode. Really haven't touched Tinker's Construct. I gotta do a couple of other things, though. Okay, so uh, we put the planter in the center. Point it up if it's not an option. Uh, and then above that, we cover up everything in the fertilized dirt. Of course, I can't reach it. Being a bat helps with this stuff. Uh, no. I was going to leave a space open, but I realized I'm going to have to go underneath it all anyways. Oh, you're kidding. I'm out of fertilized dirt? I didn't think I needed that many. Holy shite. Uh, well, conveniently, I have all of the parts necessary. I have some rotten flesh in here. I have 
bone meal in here that I have just stored up from previously. Boink. Uh, I don't know if that's enough, but I guess I'll find out. I only need to make three. Three will do me. Oh, and apparently I had dirt in my inventory and I didn't realize it. Uh, yeah, six will do me. Did I put this in right? Yes, I did. Okay. I usually get those backwards. All right. I don't care about you because I can get you infinitely. Plop, plop, plop. Okay. So now we have our fertilized dirt area. And I'm going to dig here just so I have access to our planter. And let's see, I need our harvester. We'll put the harvester here. That's pointed the wrong way. Um, can I just pickaxe this thing? I can with the silk touch at least. Okay. Yeah, there we go. The, the, the blade looking things need to be pointed outwards. All right, and I need a chest. For its inventory, that's not the chests. Um, nah, I don't need a big chest, I just need a little chest. So this will do me. Bloop. Alrighty, now we have the basis for a farm. So basically the planter will plant things, the harvester will harvest things, and then now we can do something with it. Now we need a three by three area. Here should do me. And I need water. I don't have water. You don't need to go there. All right, so get me some water. You know, I spent another 10 minutes probably going to say this in every episode, but I spent another 10 minutes making sure I had everything I needed and uh, pff, don't have everything I need. All right, so we have a 3x3 three three spring of water. I don't know if 3x3 three three is needed, but that's what I use. Okay, and then we got an acu aqueous accumulator here, and it's just filling itself up with water. Uh, this is where one of our fluid ducts come in. Pop and the steam dynamo. Now, if I just threw down the steam dynamo right here, it would point up. And we don't want it to point up, we want it to point out. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know how to do that. So if we put a leadstone energy conduit here, I can plunk down my steam dynamo and point it in the right direction. We can see that it's already completely full of water. That's perfect. And this is basically an infinite water source. And so we can get as much water as we need. You know, for however long we need it. Uh, but, of course, now we need to worry about fuel. And I need to worry about sleeping. Because I really don't feel like dealing with mobs. And we don't have the magnum torches. Oh, if we had a magnum torch, I would totally make one. And I would totally use it. All right, so anyways, we need some kind of burnable fuel. The steam dynamo runs on water, which creates the steam, and we some kind of burnable fuel, like coal or charcoal or that kind of thing. But we need to get this to where it needs to be. Actually, I'm going to turn into my bat form, because being a bat makes this very easy, because you can fit in a one-by-one -one block. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. And a boop. Okay. So now we have power lines going to the harvester and to the planter under the ground. This is confusing. <laughs> this is a little bit confusing. I have to keep this stuff straight in my head. Uh, so let's put our furnace here. And now our furnace has access to the power as well. We need an item duct. That goes here. Boop. And I need my wrench. Uh, let's put in our pneumatic servo first. And wrench that guy. 
set you to always on and we got a whitelist but I don't have the items to whitelist yet hang on that's over here gonna need something to plant into or put into the planter so I use spruce saplings I'll use spruce saplings because that's the that's what I have right now um, so we'll put no hang on um, that's not what I need to put in there I need to put in spruce wood where is spruce wood? Spruce wood, spruce wood. Okay, there we go. So we put in spruce wood into the whitelist. So spruce wood will only go through that pipe. And then we need to make sure you're set up properly. Yeah, the blue is on the right side. That's great. So basically what will happen, the harvester will harvest the plants that grow. Then it will output everything to the chest adjacent to it. And then all of the spruce wood that's in here will go into the redstone furnace. Holy crap, we already have an output where we need it. Huh, this just totally worked. You should see the trial ones. My trial ones are a freaking mess. Um, and then I think all I have to do is that, and it will, the redstone furnace will automatically put things into the pipe, which will th send things to the steam dymo, but that's not how I wanted to do it. No. Uh, pop you. Uh, we will set your top to an output. We will actually get rid of those out outputs. So I will only be accepting input from this side and only going out that side. Uh, and then we need an item duct to go on top, and then over here, pop, because this is where I want to use one of the hoppers. Plop. All right, so this will go up, and this will go into the hopper, where I'll have a little bit of a buffer for the cooked items. Uh, yeah. I think by now, I think you get the point, at least I hope you get the point, we're basically cooking the things that the harvester collects to make power. All right, now I need to go under the chest. Plop. And I need more item ducts. Boop, 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 boop. Come on, boop, and a boop. All right, so now we have an item duct there. And it needs a pneumatic servo because it's attached to a chest and the chest doesn't automatically output things. It needs to be turned that way. And we need to set its whitelist to the spruce saplings. Now this is the only thing that's going to come off the spruce trees. You don't get apples from spruce trees. So I don't have to worry about a, a third output to the chest. So no fear there. Pop and then it will pull, oh, I didn't turn that on, hang on, on. And then it will pull the saplings down into the planter. And let's put some, do I have enough dirt? Yes, I do, okay. So we'll put, oh, I had another stack here. Uh, I'm putting dirt here because the planter won't use the dirt. It will, however, use the spruce saplings, and I just really don't want it to fill up its entire inventory with spruce saplings because that's just annoying. And a waste of saplings. We're never going to use this. I'm actually going to have so many saplings, I won't know what to do with them. And that's no joke. I, I, I'll have too many saplings. Um, okay, so what else do I need to do? Let's see. We got power generation going to these things we have the planter active i need to use these upgrades okay by default the harvester which i can show you if i grab the precision sledgehammer which i just need plastic sheets and a couple sticks uh three and a pair of sticks pair of sticks i got a pair of sticks i got a pair of sticks for you that sounded a lot better in my head. Okay, so if we have the um, precision sledgehammer selected, uh, I'm not getting Kellers. That's unusual. I don't really get Kellers. Keller coding. 
All right, anyways, uh, this one that you see that goes to here is for the harvester. This one here that you see is for the planter. Now, obviously there's overlap, but we got a line of blocks there and we got a line of blocks here and we have stuff that's not touched. So this is where we have to use the upgrades that I made. And I'm just using lapis upgrades. I'm not going for any of the bigger upgrades because I don't need to worry about it. Boop. All right. So now if we look at the precision hit sledgehammer, that's a wrench, not a sledgehammer. We could see that we just, it looks like just one block, but there's actually two of them there. One for the planter, one for the harvester, and they both cover the same area. I just like having a very large area. I found that this size works best. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just realized something. This is wrong. This is wrong. Crap. I messed up. Come on. There we go. Oh, no, no. I want to pop you. Where's my sledgehammer? Alright. Well, I just realized how I have to disperse the power. Um, and I just realized that how I had it set up is wrong. So plunk that down there, and we'll do it this way. Which is actually going to make it a little hard. I shouldn't have built it this close to the smithy. Uh, anyways, alright, so... This is where the, uh... Energy cells come in. We'll put one here. And we will set... Your front to output. Everything else will be input except for that side. Okay, so front side... And this side will be set to output. And then we'll put two more down. And we're getting loud around the chickens, I'm sorry. <sighs> Alright, and then you need to max output at 80. You we need to change your output. And we want you to input at uh, shift. No. Control. Wow. Oh, right, you max at 400, don't you? Right? Oh, I forget. Um, anyways, control does 5. I want you to output at 60 RF per tick. And I want you... No, input at 60 RF per tick. And I want you to input at 20 RF per tick. All right, so this one is the one that's going to be outputting to our system, to our main system. So this will be our power buffer that powers this setup here. And then this guy right here will be our power buffer that outputs to wherever we need it. Yeah, I totally did this wrong. I shouldn't have built this so close to the smithy, but uh, I tried to, I was trying to make this compact and I failed miserably. Oh, great, Hopper. Nothing above it, nothing above it. Oh, but I have my sign here. Shit. I did not make this very well. Damn. Plop. Alright, so now we have our hopper back. It's not going to affect anything, so it's fine there. And... That should be it. At least I think. Hang on, let me let me let me think about this for a minute. Let me take a nap real quick while I think about this. Uh, what else do I need to do? I'm gonna need to expand on this idea a little bit. I know that already. I just haven't gotten there yet. All right. Oh wait, no. Put that on. My armor's getting a beating. Huh. I should stop going into the Nether all the time. All right, so let us think about this a second. So we got power coming out here. Powers this guy. Powers all the... Oh, I know what I'm missing. I know what I'm missing. Okay. Um, oh, and I didn't make it either. Uh, bu, bu, bu. What is that thing called? Crap. 
I am probably going to have to something generator. There it is. No, not that one. Oh, shite. All right. All right, so give me a second, and I will build this, find this thing that I need that I can't remember the name of, and I will build it, and then I'll come right back. All right, I'm back. It was a sludge boiler. Okay, because the side effect of using the harvester is that we create sludge. And if this internal storage gets full, the harvester won't work. So we got to do something about the flux. Sludge. Um, I need my shovel. That's what I need. And you might wonder why I'm going, I'm digging down like this. And that's because the sludge boiler itself has a side effect. Um, come on, there we go, pickaxe. Oh, there we go. All right, far enough down. Yeah, the sludge boiler itself has a side effect that makes it uh, so that if you're if you're beside it when it's running, uh, you get poisoned. And I don't want to deal with poison. I really, really don't. So we will put leadstone there the whole way up. And I will get power from there. Then we switch to our fluidux. Plunk. Plunk you there. One there. And then so on and so forth. The whole way up. Alright. And now I need item ducts. Because we have outputs of... Uh, yeah, this thing to worry about of the sludge boiler. Come on. There we go. All right, and then I'll just plunk down the chest real quick here. Whew. All right, so I think we have everything now. I think we're ready to start powering the system. And to do that, we have to give it give it a little bit of a jump start. So I'm going to grab some spare charcoal that I have. Plunk. And feed our steam dynamo. Now, it's powering this guy here, which is outputting to this guy here, which is outputting to all of these things here. So we can see we have energy actually building up, and we can see everything's planting. Now, the general idea is that at this point, we don't touch anything. We don't have to. There, there really is no reason to. But for speed's sake, I have no more bone meal. <laughs> oh, there we go. We just had a tree grow. All right, and it can take a few moments before the harvester goes at it. Oh, and we ran out of power. Yeah, we don't have enough power right now. So what's happening here is that the harvester is putting everything in the chest. This is pulling out the spruce wood, which is getting cooked and fed back into the steam dymo. Dymo? Dynamo. I keep call Why am I calling it dymo? Oi. Um, and which is powering everything and the planter and all that fun crap. Uh, we're also powering the sludge boiler down there um i just want to show everybody why is it so hard to get down here all right and our sludge boiler has no sludge what am i doing wrong um point i still have no sludge what am i doing wrong Wait, do I have any work? Oh, I do have work. Okay, so it it was doing its thing. Uh, what it will do... And I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> I just realized this thing har started harvesting. Uh, let's, there, set you like that. 
As long as the harvester doesn't have any sludge in its internal inventory, it's all going down there. And I'm staying away from that guy because he's going to poison me. But uh, as we have work, or as we get sludge, it will shite. That's what I was worried about. As we get sludge, we will gather work. Once that work bar that you saw got, gets to the top, it outputs a random item. Uh, of a specific set. There's, there's a certain set of items that it can output. Um, one of those items is dirt. There's clay, which is awesome because I love, I love having clay and I hate finding clay because it's such a pain in the ass to find. Um, so yeah, I mean, there we go. We have... There we go. Okay, so now what we have is an overly complex machine that, uh produces power. And it does it fairly slowly. But that's not a bad thing either. We can expand on this machine. And I intend to. Uh, I've just got to figure out how. Hmm. Because I kind of screwed myself with the spacing here. I don't really have the space to put anything else in here. And that kind of sucks. I did kind of screw myself in the spacing. What I would, what I was thinking I was doing was I was building this way, and I was going to build out this way. But because that thing's loud, hang on a second. Options. Just turn you down. All right, now you guys can hear me. Anyway, so uh, since or when I was building this way, it wasn't working, so I had to build out this way, which means that I can't build out this way because I was stupid and put it underneath the smithy. I was trying to be close. I was trying to be compact. Eh, I screwed myself. Uh, as you can see, we're actually building more charcoal. Um, once the charcoal actually gets full up here, the system will actually stop working. Well, okay. Um... Yeah, I'm not kidding when I say this takes a little while. Normally, these trees don't grow that fast. I mean, these trees are blazing fast. Oh, yeah, there's one other thing I need to do. I just realized this, and it's probably going to screw us if we don't. So I need item ducks. I'm going to trap myself doing this. Uh, boop. There we go. Okay. Now, what I did here is when we get uh, saplings in here, they will go down here and they will take the first exit that they can reasonably take. And that's this over here to the planter. Now, the only thing that's going to be in this pipe is spruce saplings, so I don't have to worry about putting pneumatic servos in here or anything like that. Uh, but they will go down here and they will go into the planter. Now, if the planter is full, which it will be eventually... The saplings will continue down here, go around that pipe, and into that pipe over there, which goes up into our chest that we put here earlier to catch all the stuff from the sludge boiler downstairs. Oh, and we get mud balls, hardened dirt. Um, a lot of this stuff is kind of useless. I don't know what it's for. Decoration. We're getting a lot of jumpy jumpies. I don't know if cranking up or using V-Sync was helpful. I was hoping it would stay at 60 FPS, but it's it's totally not. <sighs> Anyways, um, so there's that. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, I need... Well, I'm far, far, far too lazy to keep heading to the other side of the valley over there to get lava. Uh, let's get... Oh, I already have my sleeping bag. Plunk. Sleeping bag. Um, oh, hey. Random raw chicken. I, I never did replace the glass in the, in the chicken coop. Alright, so anyways. I am far too lazy to keep going to the other side of the valley to uh, gather up lava. 
So what I'm gonna do is cheat. Yeah, that ought to do me. Leadstone energy conduits. We'll go here. And we'll plunk you down and around. Bloop, bloop. And then we'll sit you there because we will then put the lava fabricator here. And as you can see, it's gathering up energy. And once it gets to a certain point, it will gather lava. And then we will use some fluid ducts. Bloop, bloop. Which, I wonder what you're doing. Oh, it already sucked all the lava in. Wow, I, I actually didn't expect that to happen. All right, so what will happen is, I mean, that's the entire purpose of this giant machine right here, this giant lag-inducing machine right here. Um, well, frame rate lag, not uh, server lag, I'm noticing. But yeah, definitely getting frame rate lag, serious frame rate lag. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. Hang on, let me let, let my brain reboot real quick. So, the entire point of this monstrosity here is to power this lava fabricator. Now, I had a choice here. I could use a lava fabricator, or I could have used a uh, magma crucible with an igneous extruder. Now, the igneous extruder would create cobblestone, which means I didn't have to power it. But I would have to power the magma crucible. Um, and I did some tests in creative mode. And the lava fabricator is about twice as efficient, takes about half the power, about approximately, than the magma crucible. So this is actually m more functional. Um, and it's not going to be quick, but what I'm going to do somehow, I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, yeah, somehow what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add another steam dynamo here dynamo here uh possibly two more steam dynamos because we're going to be producing more charcoal than we can possibly use i'm not joking when i say that and what i'll do is yeah i'll probably just oh i could work that way okay uh basically what i'll do is I will extend this out, this pipe here, I'll extend it out to another hopper and another steam dynamo. Dynamo. And this, the redstone furnace will output into the item duct and into that hopper until that hopper is full. And then it will output into a second hopper that I'll put somewhere around here that goes into another steam dy dynamo and gets its fluid from right there and we'll power another um bah you know what would be easier if i just show you <laughs> it's like screw this i'm just gonna show you uh let's see i have another hardened energy cell now in my testing i wasn't using the hardened energy cells these guys because they hold uh, 2 million RF. I was actually holding the using the leadstone energy cells Which hold just 400 K RF and they only send and receive 80 um, The sending and receiving is not a problem at all. It's uh, just power I want to save up all of that power that I make and that's what I'm gonna do All right, so what I'm gonna do plunk you there and by default your bottom is output so I'm not stealing any power from the system right now um, then I'm going to put the steam dymo here which is pointing in the right direction and then a boop, fluid duct there which will give me water here um, I have found in my testing that three aqueous or one aqueous accumulator can pretty safely power three steam dynamos uh, but adding a fourth one is going to overload the steam dot or it's going to overload the aqueous accumulator um all right so let's see hopper Boop. and there's nothing above the hopper so i don't have to worry about breaking anything uh Item duct, we'll put an item duct 
there. Get me my crescent hammer and disable that guy entirely. And you're going to go in there and you're going to go in there and that will all be fine. So now what will happen is when this hopper is full, uh, the charcoal that this redstone furnace produces will go into this hopper here and then out. So then we'll have that much more power going to our lava fabricator. And that much more lava that be, that is produced. Oop. Yeah, we are producing power fairly slowly here. Um, but this is just the build-up thing. Pretty much everything I make is going to take a little bit of time to get up to speed. And that's fairly normal for my builds. Um, whoopsie doodle. Pick you up. Plunk you there, plunk you there. That way I don't have to worry about things falling into the hoppers and breaking the system. Uh, but once these tanks are full and this lava fabricator fills itself and then these hoppers fill up and basically everything gets full, this harvester will actually stop doing its thing and will stop drawing power. And then these will all fill up, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let all of this stuff fill up. It's going to take a while, uh, several hours at least, possibly days, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but once it does that, then we're going to have... Then I'll be able to just fire it up and let it do its thing. Uh, basically take... What's going to happen is this chest is going to be pretty much completely full of spruce wood by that time. And then I'm going to take all of the spruce wood that we can't use and then output it into my lockers of infinity. And then we'll have infinite all kinds of stuff. Spruce saplings, sand, dirt. And this is how you get infinite dirt. It's going to be slow, but it'll work. Um, now, I could keep going with this. Uh, what I can do, I could, if I really, really wanted to, put the a third steam dynamo here and actually power it off of ashes and spruce saplings that I get and then we can get more power now that dynamo won't be running all of the time but it works you know we get all kinds of spare stuff and you might be mildly curious why we have some saplings just kind of lying around like that uh, what's happening is the harvester grabs the wood first. It's trying to grab it, you know, up, but it will grab the central piece of wood first and then grab the leaves around it. But sometimes, because of whatever mod it is that make the leaves go away really, really fast, except for that one, uh, sometimes the leaves will actually despawn faster than the harvester can get at them. And, it, and they can drop saplings. So that's why there are saplings floating around. And obviously it's not a problem because obviously our planter's full because we're getting spruce saplings down here. Get gravel, clay, sand. Yeah, so basically what we're going to have here is an infinite lava source for our Tinker's Construct uh, smeltery. Which is pretty cool. And then, once I have an infinite lava source for my smeltery, I probably will take advantage of its multiplying uh, 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 ingot output. And I'll put, like, a timer on these things and, uh, yeah, and just output everything automatically. Uh, <laughs> just make the entire Tinker's Construct thing automatic. Are we still low on power? Yeah. No, no, we're not still low on power. Huh. This should... Eventually, anyways... Whoop. This is going faster than the one on... Um in creative mode. This is going significantly faster than the one in creative mode. 
because this is actually using more power than it's producing. I don't know. That's adding up right there. Hmm. Hang on. Let's just crank that up to full output. That way we, we can output everything we need. Uh, we'll crank you up to full output. And then let's roll over here. Bloop. And crank you up to full output. Alrighty. Well, I think that pretty much covers our new uh, thing. And uh, I'm sure... Oh, I got a King Slime. Ooh, we got a boss. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay, so... I have a uh, pond here with that slime water. I found a slime island that way somewhere. And every once in a great while, a king slime will spawn instead of a normal slime. Now, I've never fought a king slime before, but they have 200 health. 200 health? I forget, actually. Hang on. Oh, it doesn't say. That was nothing. What did I get? Oh, I got an axe. Oh, I got a heart. I got a miniature red heart. Awesome. I got a king slime hatchet. Plus six attacks damage. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a hatchet made entirely out of slime. Crunch, 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 crunch. Uh, because you can take these things, the gelatinous slimes, turn them into slime crystals, and make things out of them. Um, I won't because they're just not worthwhile i thought that king slime was going to be harder that was nothing of course his drops were kind of nothing too so it doesn't really matter though that miniature red heart's going to be useful because you can use it uh here and get extra hearts and i have every intention of filling all three of these up and getting all of my hearts because that's part of creative motive as well is not getting hurt so we're going to be working on immortality. Uh, we're going to go above and beyond creative mode and work on weaponry that can kill everything in one hit. Hi, Mr. Lego Head. Uh, and yeah, so, okay, so there we go. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is actually a very long episode because it's been like four days and I've usually been doing this in two or three days. Yeah, so I am going to end the episode here. Uh, just going to say that uh, that air, that power uh, creation system right there is the basis of a lot of other things that I'm going to be making. So we can basically take the output of the power and put it to anything. So that'll, that'll be really useful later on in the series. Um, so anyways, I'm going to say uh, see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.